This episode of The Sleepcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasoning such as the Discord, the Sonoran Heat, the Smoked, and the Mad Hatter. You can't go wrong with any of the great seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Be sure to use the promo code one year two zero that is one spell out o n e y e a r two zero at checkout for twenty percent off this this promo code expires at the end of October but don't worry if you miss out you can still get ten percent off by using the promo code sloopcast ten be sure to check out the mad Canadian social medias to check out where he is heading this weekend mad Canadian barbecue company where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company. Uh, maybe the first thing you notice is the prices are a bit higher than you might expect. Well, I want you to know that one, you get free shipping for any order over $50. Two, you're supporting veterans. Three, uh, all the coffee is fair trade certified and USDA organic. And again, they're all roast to order. I think that's incredibly important. This, these beans haven't been sitting on a shelf at the grocery store for months. They haven't been sitting in a bin somewhere for weeks. You order it, then it's roasted. And that's the sort of freshness <laughs> that you, you you can't get most other places. So you get all of that. Uh, you get an intense selection of, 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 I almost said beers, of coffees, uh, like the ride or die, the cast iron. Those are two really nice medium roast ones. Or uh, there is the drink from the skull of your enemy, which is a dark and a fear no evil, which is dark. And I'll tell you a little bit more about those coffees in the next ad break. But for right now, just know that you can find all of this and a lot more at ironbeancoffee.com, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube? Howdy, howdy. Are you drinking tonight, Kyle? I am not drinking tonight. Yeah. Feel it was, It's your turn to feel a little under the weather. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'm drinking, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go label this way because no one's sponsoring us right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's a Wolf's Ridge. We still got love for Wolf's Ridge. They're not yeah. sponsoring us right this second, but, um, and you know, they're not sponsoring us because I just showed you a beer that you can't even buy right now. I don't think, I don't think yeah. the, Octo I think the Oktoberfest is officially out of season. So, you know, they're not sponsoring us. Still got love. Still got love. Still keep the bottle right there. Yes. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and return, uh, to our, uh, audio only listeners. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing right here. How are you today, Jared? I feel like uh, during the section of the show where we talk just to our YouTube people, I stuck a, a can of beer into the camera and I feel like it's not focusing back on me. So I'm a little preoccupied with that at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's. I think it's better now. I think it's better now. So that's that's my big drama for the moment. How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. We've got a lot to get a lot to talk over in this episode here. We got some black stripe news, uh, some injury updates, some upcoming game times, and COVID news. Oh, our favorite. Yes, <sighs> our favorite. Everybody's favorite. Everyone's favorite. All right, let's, let's talk the... about black stripes. Yes, let's start. Talk with the about news. the black stripes. The slobs, Jared. We have a pair of slobs with their black stripes removed. They might be slobs, but they have some great names. Yes. Very, very like sophisticated pinky out sort of names. As Jared takes a sip there. Yeah. Uh, we have offensive lineman Trey LaRue. We have a lot of, there's a, like a, a good deal of like, between our offensive slobs and our defensive slobs, 
well represented with the French last names. Yes. Yeah. And then we have Grant Taltant, which again, sounds very, you know, aristocracy. Yes. Taltant. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a house from Game of Thrones, I think is what I'm trying to say. House Taltant. It, it, see, doesn't it? It does, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we, we also have a tight we have a tight end also the Joe year of Royer. the tight end <laughs> every year is the year of the tight end until it isn't <laughs> yep joe royer yep and, and defensive end darian henry yes so that's your black stripe update uh i i don't have a good counter going for the moment but i think we're getting i think we're getting close to all of them i think so i think there's just a few left not many but uh, what, who are a little bit more concerned about right now is Chris Olave. Chris Olave um, leaves. They haven't officially used. <laughs> I was going to say something. I'm not going to say that. Um, they haven't officially used the concussion word yet. So we aren't we aren't officially calling it a concussion. Ryan Day. One of the things that you'll notice from the Ryan Day era from the Urban Meyer era. Ryan Day is far more secretive with injury updates and injury news. So if he if he doesn't have to talk about it, he's not gonna. But essentially, uh, we are sort of playing it by ear officially with with Chris Olave with what may or may not, but was absolutely a concussion. Uh, rumor has it that he is likely to play. That he was participating in a non-contact fashion in practice this week. Um, and that, and that's as we record this as the days go on, cause mm -hmm. we record this on Wednesday night. Most of you won't hear it until Friday, unless of course you're a patron, in which case you can hear it on Thursday. Uh, but most people aren't hearing, uh, or uh, yeah, most people aren't hearing this until Friday. So at this point, we don't know that he has practiced in a contact fashion yet. But officially, we don't know anything. From an official, official standpoint, we know nothing. No, he took a pair of hard hits. Yeah. Last weekend, so. The second one being, well, mm -hmm. the, the, the first one wasn't necessarily a head hit. It was just, it was more of a full just, body hit. Mm -hmm. But this, It was a big hit. Yeah. It was a big hit. But the second one was, was bad. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, timing, time, we have a... Time set for the Rutgers game, which will be next weekend. Uh, it is scheduled to a 7.30 kickoff, Jared? Yeah, uh, let me let me do the math on this. Some people are like, what? Ohio State Rutgers in prime time? Let me on explain. the Big Ten Network. Let me explain to you why this makes sense. The Big Ten Network, especially with the shortened schedule that we're working under, and, you know, as, as we see what's happening in Wisconsin might, right now might be even shorter than shortened. How often does the Pig 10 network this season going to have a an opportunity to play an Ohio State game? This might be one of two, maybe. So if maybe this is the only opportunity that the Big Ten network has to put Ohio State on this channel. So you're damn right they're going to put it in prime time. So how does Ohio State Rutgers make it into prime time? That's how. Yeah. Yep. Makes sense. So I was alluding to Wisconsin there. Um, right after we recorded last week's or uh, earlier this week's episode, the Monday episode, uh, news comes out that Mertz, the new quarterback at Wisconsin, has COVID. So then we also sort of sat back and waited because that was the rapid test and the rapid test isn't as good as the standard test. So before he got suspended is the only word I can think of. That's not quite the right word, but got sat down for three weeks. So in case the rapid test is a false positive, we do the standard test. We wait for the standard test. Standard test comes back. And he does, in fact, have, have COVID-19. But then we hear, uh, as of uh, Wednesday, that it's it's not just him. That apparently there are 12 people in total in the Wisconsin football program 
Uh, this includes six student athletes and six staff members, including Paul Christ, the head coach. So there is no Wisconsin Nebraska game this weekend. Nope. In we'll just input here a hashtag fire Kevin Warren here because if yeah. we had the original schedule, we yeah. would have had weeks off to make up this game. But nope. No. This game is going to be now a non contest. Yeah. Which is one less game for both of these teams now. Yep. Uh, yeah, there's, which there's, is just terrible. Yeah, there's just no terrible. opportunity to reschedule this because the schedule no longer allows for it because Kevin Warren mishandled everything about this this year. That that's that's the that's just, the summation of it. Ridiculous. And and I've heard mm-hmm. stuff that maybe the Big Ten is going to revisit the 21 day rule because. And they Why should. they should because the C because the CDC their recommendation is ten to fourteen days. Why go the extra week? Like, are you trying to prove a point or something? Like, hey, we're the Big Ten. We we're going to they, do a step above. And it's like, no, that's it's no. either the Big Ten trying to prove a point, which it very well could be that, and it's failed miserably recently, or it could be and the official reason they did it is concern over the heart swelling, which we're now to the point where the heart swelling is now known to be such an extreme rarity that they, that basically it's been recommended by the medical establishment that we please stop doing these tests because the idea that it's possible, you know, we only have so many, beds and so many doctors to do these tests that basically the medical establishment is saying, please stop sending us people to test the heart just because they got COVID. This is such an extremely rare case. So the official reason for the 21 days was to monitor potential heart swelling, but we now know that that's, it was, it's nonsense. Yes. It it was well-intentioned. People were concerned about it. It's a disease we didn't know a lot about at the time that we were concerned about it. We know more about it now. The heart swelling is not an issue. So this 21 days is ludicrous. Let's make it 14 games. Let's make it two games, 14 days, two games. You know what I'm attempting to say here, everybody. And I've heard that the Big Ten might revisit it, but... Even if they do, how quickly will they do that? And we all know that the Big Ten does nothing quickly. Nope. Except nope. cancel the season out of the blue. They did that real quickly. All right, that's enough. Right. I don't let's, want to talk anymore. Yeah, I'm done. Done with the COVIDs. Yeah, I was going to say, let's move on before oh, actually get even more upset here. Bef- We're only doing six sloop picks this week, and, and that's why. We normally do yes. seven. This week, it's only six. We had this game on the sloop pick schedule and it got we'll canceled. Still, we'll, still, we'll still say who we would have picked. But yeah. Why not? For shits and giggles. Shits and giggles. Yes. All right. Let's, let's get into deciphering day here, Jared. Yeah. All right. Uh, day, 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 day starts off saying that regarding to Chris Olave, they will, they will move some things around if Chris Olave can't go and, they will quote see as the week goes on and how it goes. It just pretty much so, day just saying that's a no. That's what we call a no update update. Yes, that's that's yep. you saying, hey everyone, I have an update. There's no mm. update. Yep. Uh, one of the big concerns against the Nebraska game last weekend was the running backs. Uh, day talks about um, the running backs were solid after looking at the film which we wouldn't have thought when we looked at the game. Uh, Well, we, I think we pretty much said on the Monday episode that the issues we saw was with the line and not the running backs. Mm. Uh, They said they got better as the game went on, which true. Yeah. Early on, it was just okay. They will work hard to taking the next step in game two. The scout team look just can't exactly replicate what you actually face going against different looks during games helps. And then when you have the two quarterback rotation that we saw with Nebraska, 
that didn't really help out either on the defensive side. Well, yeah. He was talking about on the, yes. For the offensive yeah. players, which is why you threw me for a second, but yeah. <laughs> um, goes on to talk about the offense here. Pass protection was excellent, which we mentioned before, yeah. uh, including the running backs. They have a lot of long developing, long developing pass plays, which require extended blocking, which we've seen too. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the things I think maybe fans aren't always super aware of that. If you want to, man, I wish they'd throw the ball downfield more, man. Why don't they throw the ball downfield more? Well, one of the reasons why you don't see teams throw the ball downfield more is because it exposes your quarterbacks to more hits Mm -hmm. because for the receivers to get downfield, they take the, your quarterback's just going to hold the ball a bit longer. Yep. Uh, Probably the biggest concern here that I think Buckeye nation is really curious about how Ohio State's going to clean up is defending the quarterback run. As we mentioned in last week or last Monday's episode about Ohio State going to be facing multiple running quarterbacks this year. Uh, it talks about how defending the quarterback run. Um, he said it was solid overall for the Buckeyes. He said the quarterback scramble was a mistake on a stunt by the defensive tackle. And he says, all it takes is one play. They have to clean it up. The consequences of practice in a game has to be felt. And it, all it takes is one guy in one play in any of those three phases to lose a game. That's a great day, but you're lying. Uh, the, defending, solid. the defending the quarterback run was not solid. What what did we just dis- what what was the total? Did we say it was like 160, 150 some yards? Something like that. Between yeah. the two quarterbacks rushing the ball, like ninety and sixty yards. Something like yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, no, Ryan Day defending the quarterback run was not solid. Mm-hmm. And spoiler alert: there's another one coming up here this Saturday. You got to worry about. I'm not as not as well. <laughs> we'll get to it. We'll get yeah. to it. We'll get there. Right, we'll get there. Um, but Haskell Garrett um, was our photo or our picture for our episode here was Haskell here. Uh, and our, talks yeah. about Haskell Garrett and he said he wasn't surprised of what he did because he knows what he's capable of. But he was impressed by the way Garrett played. If he can continue that, he, w- he could have a major impact at a position where everyone had their eyes on. Uh, also talking about the defensive line here, he said losing for Penn State, that is, losing Micah Parsons and Journey Brown is certainly felt and it's unfortunate, but you but you rally and move on, which Penn State is doing. You don't easily replace good players like that. And we'll cover that also here in the Know Your Enemy of who our state should watch out on that defensive line. Well, yeah, you have the you have Micah Parsons who sort of played a more move to linebacker. Uh, and then you have journey Brown who they lost at running back. And now uh, they lost both of them just to the draft them opting out. And then you have Noah Kane who was a running back Ohio state wanted very much. He is now injured and, and isn't going to be playing. So between opt outs and injuries, Penn state is already losing a fair amount of talent yes all right probably the most dangerous player on offense for penn state talks about pat fryermuth fire he said, he's a say it with me now kyle yeah fryermuth okay we'll just have to accept he is a mismatch in both the running game and passing game has great ball skills Definitely going to be one of the top tight ends to be drafted. Yeah. Ohio state has had issues in the past, most notably against Iowa, uh, defending big talented tight ends. Uh, Mm -hmm. So we'll see. (laughs) I think, you know, Iowa is officially a long time ago at this point. Ohio state has played against really good tight ends since I, I, I don't think we need to continue to, throw up the panic flag every time a huge tight end is, is in play. But that being said, Pat Firemuth is an incredibly talented player. Yep. All right. Moving on here. Um, Ryan day talks about Penn state having an excellent defensive end and 
Owe and Tony. Uh, says their scheme is really is just really solid. They don't give you big plays. They play really good zone defense and have good blitzes. You have to handle the pressure or else they're they'll just keep coming at you. All right, last last comment here from Ryan. Incredibly Gray. just the incredibly talented Jason Owe um, is mm-hmm. another guy that Ohio State wanted a lot. This is a guy that would yes. be a starting defensive end on Ohio State right now. No doubt in my mind. Yep. Um, last thing here about Marcus Hooker. He mentioned that he was solid after the first drive and is only going to get better with more experience. Says, quote, he's an integral part of our defense and he's going and he's doing he's going to have to be solid for us it was a good start yeah you have young safeties in there inexperienced safeties in there and uh, like a lot of the players on the ohio state defense and in the ohio state secondary young and inexperienced some mixture of those two things so you know patience I think is, is what we're saying here and give them a chance to get better. And I think that's sort of where we are with hooker at the moment. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else regarding to Ryan day? Nope. Let's do our slew picks. Kyle, we have six games, six Six games last week, six games. All right. We have first off here. We have Minnesota taking on Maryland. Full disclosure, this game, the only reason this game we're even picking it is because it's the Friday game. And I remember sitting there watching the Friday game last week thinking, I should have made this a slow pick. <laughs> All right. Minnesota. Yeah. The, the Golden Gophers are a 20 and a half point favorite. Yeah. Who do you have Jared. Uh, Minnesota, 20 and a half point favorite. Uh, Minnesota disappoints in their first week out. They were missing a bunch of players. I don't necessarily know if or how many of those players they're getting back for this week. Uh, That being said, it's Maryland. So, you know, it's Maryland. So screw it. Give me Minnesota. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, I got Minnesota too. Just because it's Maryland. I got Minnesota as well. As you mentioned, Minnesota was out with quite a few key players. And they were right there with Wisconsin until the end, <laughs> until the end of the game. I really, I really think that Michigan. Thank you, Michigan. Uh, <laughs> right there with Michigan until towards the end. So I really think that Minnesota is just going to overpower Maryland. Also know that I'll, I'll take the points here. <laughs> I think I think you're just a little bit confused at the second. I don't know, man. Those northern <laughs> teams. Those northern teams, I tell you. Okay. All right, Kyle, Kyle, just shake that one off, buddy. Shake that one off. Mm. Oh, all right. Oh, uh, that sounded all right. nasty. All right. Um, this week's picker is Brawley. Sean Brawley. Sean Brawlsack Brawley. Yes. That's, yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. He says here he picks Maryland to cover. He said this is the hardest one for me. Is Minnesota worse than we thought? Is Michigan better than we thought? Will Minnesota have a punter or a kicker for this game? So many unknowns. Maybe surprising, but I'm taking the points. Give me Maryland to lose, but cover. So he's going opposite of us there, which probably yes. means that we're wrong. Yes. All right, next up here, we have Boston College taking on Clemson. Clemson is a 31 and a half point favorite. And I think it's not going to be even close. I have Clemson to cover here. I just, from what I've seen with Boston College right now, it just not not enough talent to keep up with Clemson there. Of course not. No, 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 no. Boston College is going to lose. Yeah, not, they're going to lose by more than thirty points. I don't think so. All right. Well, well, we'll differ here. We'll differ here. I we've seen Clemson struggle against Syracuse, and we, like not not that they were ever in a position to lose. Don't get me wrong. 
We saw him underperform against Virginia. We've seen this Clemson team just sort of play down to their opponents at times. And Boston College has looked good. They creamed yeah. Georgia Tech. They they got creamed by Virginia Tech. They took Pitt to overtime. Uh, and they were a two-point conversion away of, from taking the Tar Heels to overtime. Jeff Halfley has this team moving in the correct direction. They aren't going to win this game. This game's not going to be competitive. But Jeff Halfley has this team moving in the right direction. Clemson has a tendency to play down to their opponents. 31's a giant number. Give me Boston College. It'll probably be right. like 21, 24. All right. Uh, Brawley says here, Halfley was responsible for one of the most impressive improvements of a defensive unit ever seen at Ohio State. He may not have Ohio State talent, but I am taking his defense powers in taking Boston College to lose by less than 31. See? I got the power of Brawley on my side. All right. Uh, next up here, we have Memphis taking on Cincinnati. Yeah, Memphis was Cincinnati's kryptonite last year. Uh, mm -hmm. Cincinnati was really good, went into their final game, which was against Memphis, undefeated last year. They lost to Memphis. They faced Memphis again the next week in the American Conference Championship game and, and lost again. This year, they're coming into this game with the points on their side. Memphis lost a lot of talent. I I think Cincinnati is really good this year. And I think that Clemson, or excuse me, Clemson, Memphis lost a lot of talent. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to take Cincinnati, and I'm going to take them with the points. I definitely like them to win. I think six and a half is kind of a perfect number. I'd be a lot happier if it was three and a half, four and a half. But I'm, I'm still going to take them at six and a half. Seven and a half would have been tough, but I seven and a half would have been enough to tip me. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. I got Cincinnati. Cincinnati covering is favored by six and a half here. Uh, yeah. I got Cincinnati. I just love Cincinnati's defense right now. It just their attitude defensively here. It's yeah. You get watch out for Cincinnati here to really push to potentially if all goes accordingly to how they want, where if these other power five uh, conferences where they have multiple teams with multiple losses, watch out for the Bearcats here. Well, Don't just be real quick, let's take a look at Cincinnati. Last week against a ranked S SMU, they won by 29 points. Yes against a, a, a solid American team in USF, won by 21 points. Against Army, 14 points. Against, well, that's Austin P. We don't need to talk about what they did against Austin P. Point is, is that they've not yet lost, or excuse me, won by less than six and a half points. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think that Good they've point. played better teams than Memphis this year. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm I'm go with I'm gonna go with uh, the Fighting Fickles for sure. All right, Brawley says he is taking Cincinnati to cover. 2020 is a new year, and Cincy is beating Memphis after two losses to them last year. Cincy looks too good, and Memphis lost too much talent from last year. Give me Cincy to cover. All right, next up we have uh, SCC matchup here: Georgia taking on Kentucky. Georgia is a 13 and a half point favorite. Uh, 13, 14, 14 and a half. There you go. It is 14 and a half. You are right. 14 and a half point favorite. And it doesn't matter. I'd still pick Georgia. Yeah, essentially. Uh, I, I, I think this is one of my easier picks so far. Uh, if you look at Georgia, with all of the games they've played outside of Alabama and Alabama is just on another stratosphere. Mm -hmm. They win by over 20 against Tennessee win by over 20 against Auburn win by 
over 20 against Arkansas. I, I, I don't think that Kentucky is significantly better than any of the teams. I, well, they're, okay, they're significantly better. Than, well, maybe not than Arkansas. Uh, they did beat the crap out of Tennessee, so maybe they're significantly better than Tennessee. Maybe. Are they, but they also lost to Auburn. So uh, it's sort of a wheel of suck going on in, in the SEC right now. Point mm-hmm. is, is that when the Bulldogs are better, they're better. And I think that they're a lot better talent wise than Kentucky. I think I'll be regretting this pick right up until the fourth quarter where Georgia runs the, the score up at the end. And it ends up looking like a much more comfortable win for Georgia than it ends up actually being. And I think I'll cover like that. I think I'll cover in the fourth quarter. Give me Georgia. <laughs> Yep. All right, Barley says he's picked Georgia. He goes, Kentucky? Psh, give me Georgia to cover. <laughs> yeah, what he said. <laughs> All right. Uh, we did have Wisconsin, Nebraska. We're not going to go too depth in here. But no. Wisconsin was a seven and a half. I would have picked Wisconsin to cover. Uh, Brawley picked Wisconsin to cover. Um, I. We didn't know. We didn't know about Mertz, correct. Yeah, and that's that's the big thing for me. It, if if Mertz, absolutely, I take seven and a half points. Without Mertz, I'd still what, take seven and a half. I, you're talking about a third string quarterback at a place like Wisconsin. It's different if it's a third string quarterback at a pro factory, Clemson, Ohio State, Alabama, even Georgia, or a bunch of other. Who's who would have played quarterback for Georgia or excuse me for Wisconsin this week? I have no idea. Yeah, that All would have right. been tough. Yep. All right. Um, Glad I don't have on. to do it. Yes. Moving on. Texas taking on Oklahoma State, where the Cowboys are a three and a half point favorite. And I got the Cowboys here. I think it'll be close. It's that three number right there the three the field goal is really hard for me i to me i think this was the toughest decision for me because i think it's going to be a really close game it's going to be it's going to be good old big 12 shootout here and it's going to come down to that last possession but i'll just take oklahoma state here because i think they'll win and that's i that's why i picked them to cover because three and a half is almost to that point where Whoever scores last would win. I agree with most of what you just said. Here's where I disagree. You said you think Oklahoma State will win. And I don't think that. I I don't think that they're going to lose. I think I'm just not buying into Oklahoma State. And maybe I'm being stubborn. I don't know. But I'm not buying into Oklahoma State. I'm not going to do it. And I'm not buying into Texas. My point is, is that. I don't know that Oklahoma state is better than Texas. I think like this game from a pure who wins standpoint is a pick em. In my opinion, this is a pure pick em. Therefore give me the underdog. Therefore give me Texas. All right. Brawley picks Texas to cover. He says, this is my, hopefully Jared picks Oklahoma state and Texas pulls off the upset pick. Ha <laughs> ha. I don't think. T- <laughs> I don't think Texas will win or cover, but Hey, it's 2020. So why not? Yeah, All right. This is such a, this is such a toss up to me that I'm just going with the underdog. All right. All right. Last game here. We got the fighting Buckeyes taking on not the rivals Penn no. state. Ohio state is a 13 and a half point favorite this game is on abc so it is kirk in the game kirk and the gang at 7 30 kyle yes jared did you say kirk and the gang i believe i did the second time did you say abc yep did you say ohio state Mm -hmm. did you say penn state perhaps did you say happy valley no i did not no you didn't (laughs) because <laughs> it's not going to be so happy. <laughs> did you say whiteout? No, I did not. No, no, you didn't. Well, regardless, 
You know what time it is? <laughs> yes, I do. It is time to know your enemy. Brief YouTube break. YouTube, I'm out of beer. Someone go get <laughs> someone go get me a beer. A cough. <laughs> cough. You YouTube YouTube wants to hear you cough. They want uh, they want this insider stuff. Oh. All right. All right. I'm gonna rejoin the audio listeners. Know your enemy, the Penn State Nittany Lions. Kyle, I feel like we ask this question every year, but I'm gonna ask it again anyway. What the hell's a Nittany? Nittany is not even a word. It's 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 not. Um you know, I actually looked it up this year. I don't know if I've ever done this before. We did last year. Did <laughs> I, I don't ever remember what we would do. It might be, no one's sure. It might be a Native American word for like a single mountain, I believe. I think is like, so like it's maybe a peak. I don't know. Uh, no one knows. That's the thing. No one knows. There are theories. That's about it. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a made up word. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, it, I guess, I guess it, all it's words. A cat. It's a cat. I guess all words are made up words. You got, you but got the point n- is, is I think that they're mountain lions. I think is what we're trying to say here is that sure. it's a mountain lion. It's a bobcat. They're basically OU. Yep. You got a nut taking on a cat. It's a lynx. We have a bunch of different words for bobcat. Penn State coming into this game. <laughs> Penn State coming Kyle? into this game. Owen won. Before you get too deep into it, now we've had our Nittany discussion, we've had our Bobcat discussion. Now it's time to have a conversation about coffee. Yes, you are right. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. you. You almost Kyle's excited. He wanted to really get into <sighs> it, but All right. maybe he's let's had hear, let's maybe hear, he's let's had hear too from, much coffee. Yeah, let's hear from Iron Bean Coffee Company. Yeah, I said I'd talk about a few of their roasts. Uh, I said that they have a a roast called the cast iron. It's a medium roast. Uh, it is made from 100% single origin Honduran Arabica beans. That comes from a single source. It comes from a single farm. That's not a mixed bag. That's a single source going to a single farm. You know, exactly. Well, they know exactly where those beans are coming from. Uh, there's the integrity roast, uh, this is their flagship dark roast at Iron Bean Coffee. Uh, it's a mainstay of the Iron Bean selection, dark roasted, and makes a great espresso. I believe they have that one in K cups. They have a uh, their more popular items in in K cups, but not their full selection. Uh, let's see. We also let's see. I did a medium roast. I did a dark roast. Uh, we can talk about the Loki. Named after the Nordic god of mischief. Not just a comic book character, you guys. Come on. Not just a comic book character. It's the Nordic god of mis- mis- mischief. Beer's getting to me. Uh, this is a wet process blend. Uh, it is higher in caffeine, lower in acidity, rich tasting, and filled with fragrance. Uh, citrus and floral are the dominant taste in this blend. They have a huge selection of coffee. If you like flavored coffee, they have a carrot cake, a blueberry, and a mint chocolate chip, if that's your sort of thing. But like I said, they have a huge selection of coffees. You're probably just going to want to go to ironbeancoffee.com and check it out for yourself. Uh, if you sign up for their emails, you get a discount code. If uh, you have an order over 10 or excuse me, over $50, then you get free shipping. And they also have, I bought a, a sampler pack so that I can better discuss <laughs> what, what I'm selling to you guys. Um, cause I've only had the integrity so far. So I got that sampler pack so I can report back to you with more personal knowledge on more of these things. And you can find all of these things at ironbeancoffee.com, America's local coffee roaster. This episode of the Swoopcast also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian has been a proud sponsor of the Swoopcast for a year now, and he is celebrating this year anniversary with a special 20% off promo code, one year two zero. One spelled out O N E Y E A R two zero at checkout for 20% off. 
Jared, what do you got over there? Let's just grab three random ones over there. Grab three random ones. The first one Jared has over there is the S and P bud. S and P bud is a, you're really low on that, Jared. I I have more. Don't (laughs) you worry. That's empty. That's not low. That's empty, but don't you worry. I have more. The S and P bud is, is part of one of the most versatile seasonings that the mad Canadian has goes great on any of your meats that you're wanting to grill. What else do you got over there, Jared? You have the Mad Hatter. I mentioned the Mad Hatter at the the top of the show here, but Mad Hatter is a fantastic, uh, another fantastic seasoning that the Mad Canadian has. What what do you use the Mad Hatter for? Um, Chicken, mostly. Uh, It's it's a finishing salt. Uh, It has uh, pepper blend in it, red pepper blend. And it also has lime in it. So it has that sort of chili pepper lime combination people really like. Perfect perfect for the fall right now. And, and Kyle, won't you go ahead and plug the Ope? Because I don't feel like we talk about that one enough. Yes. Due to, my, due to my personal issues with dill. I feel like <laughs> we don't talk about it enough simply because of my issues, which is not fair to the Ope. Uh, it is a smoked ranch. Do you like things that are smoked? Do you like mm-hmm. ranch? You're from the Midwest, probably. You probably like ranch. You might want to check out the Ope. He says here, the Ope is a wonderful smoked ranch blend destined to make your guests say, let me just squeeze squeeze by you and get some more of that barbecue. There you go. All right. Check out all the seasonings over at the MadCanadianBBQ.com. That is the MadCanadianBBQ.com, where they have your butts covered. All right, Kyle. Now let's get to know our enemy. All right. Penn State coming into this game 0-1. 0-1 after losing yeah. a gut wrencher to Indiana in overtime. Yeah. How, mm, hey. Then I, Hoosiers. Can I hey hey James Franklin? James Franklin, come here, buddy. Take a knee. <laughs> like may, maybe just take a knee. Um may, maybe look your your young running back right in the eye and be like hey get the first down and fall down don't don't score don't 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 just sort of mention it to the huddle you got a young and experienced guy in there he's a little bit nervous no look the running back straight in the face and say hey young running back don't score and by the way when you do end up scoring james franklin because of course that's what happened when you do end up scoring James Franklin, maybe go for two. Like, why why go up why go up eight when you can go up nine? Like, why you could have made it a two score game, James Franklin? I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of questioning. There's a lot of questions with how he coaches, but Either way, uh, Penn State coming into this game, uh, they racked up almost 500 yards against Indiana, and they let up, which is probably the staggering thing here, they let let up only 211 yards, but still lost that game. And I'd say, what was it, 80 or 75 of those yards came on that last drive. Yeah, uh, Michael Penix, who we'll talk more about in the future, he is the Indiana quarterback, uh, sort of went from chump to champ. <laughs> um, he, he's, 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 a, he's a runner. He's not a thrower. He's a runner. That's who he is. Yeah. Uh, until that last drive where all of a sudden he was a passer. Mm-hmm. And it's just sort of one of those things where you get into a two-minute drill and the quarterback catches his rhythm and yeah, in just, college football, sometimes that's impossible to stop. Mm-hmm, yeah. Defensively, like Nittany Lions are, again, it, Indiana for who they are. Uh, Penn State only let up 170 yards passing and 41 rushing. Yeah. Meanwhile, they got over, well, right at 250 rushing and almost 250 passing Penn state in many ways won this game. It's just not reflected on the scoreboard. Nope. This is, yeah, this yeah. is just one of those odd things like, Oh yeah. Penn state had a lot like over well over doubling the yardage. They, they took, 
well, they didn't take care of the ball, but <laughs> a lot, a lot of the other stats that you look at, they, you just look at the stats like, oh yeah, Penn State won this game. Looked like they would have won by a couple of scores. Nope, not the, not the case here. Uh, Sean Clifford. And by the way, a... a lot of the times when you see something like this, you expect to like look at the turnovers and see some sort of huge turnover margin, which was not the case. Penn State did lose in turnover margin, but only by one. They had three turnovers. Indiana had two. Now, situationally, Penn State's turnovers hurt a lot more. Yeah. And and there's a point in the time here. It says here when there was a point here. Yeah. After, after Penn State scored the touchdown, Penn State had a 98% chance probability to win the game yeah against indiana they they had a they had a two to one time of possession ratio they had 11 more first downs they won this game everywhere but the scoreboard which basically to me points at the coach yes absolutely uh sean clifford uh had a good game overall 238 yards (sighs) through three touchdowns (laughs) statistically yeah Three touchdowns, ran for well over 100 yards, and scored another touchdown there, too. When I talk about Penn State's turnovers being more costly than Indiana's turnovers, those came mostly Clifford's fault. Um, if If me saying, hey, when you have a game like that, a lot of the times it's the coach's fault, well, it also may have been the quarterback's fault here. Uh, ultimately college football, like I've said before, if all else is even look at the quarterbacks, Penix was the better quarterback in this game. Mm -hmm. And that does not show in the stat sheet, but I, but watching the game, one of the play, one of the quarterbacks came in true at the end. And one of them didn't Penix, I think was the difference maker in that football game. Yep. Nope. Absolutely. Uh, running back Devin Ford, their run, their young running back there, twenty rushes for sixty nine yards. Nice. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, very uh, similar to he's very, very, sim- very similar to how you look at like Ohio State's running backs, where it's like, oh, they got a decent amount of carries, but not really enough yards there. Well, and from the running backs, he's their third running back. It, it should be noted. Mm-hmm. Yep. We have um, one opt out. We have Noah Kane out for the year with a knee injury. This is if Ohio State all of a sudden had to start playing Steel Chambers. And Ohio State's Ohio State, so Steel Chambers, I'd probably rather have him in the game than I would Devin Ford. But yep. Penn State also gets really good running backs. So don't take this as like Devin Ford sucks and he's bad because he's the third running back. It's not true. Penn State recruits good running backs. I mean, like I said, Ohio State wanted Noah Kane. Ohio State lost that recruiting battle. Mm-hmm. Point being is that Penn State gets good running backs. Don't sleep on Devin Ford simply because he's the third running back. Yeah. Probably their most talented player on that offense there. Tight end Pat Freyermuth. Uh, had, he had seven receptions, led the team with seven receptions. Uh, 60 yards and a touchdown for that game. Yeah. uh, Dotson's their leading receiver or was in that last game. Anyway, Uh, four receptions, nearly a hundred yards and a touchdown. Uh, The defense is maybe a little bit more interesting. Um, I really just don't, as far as their offense is concerned, I really just don't see Penn state being anything special. Clifford's nothing special. Ford's a nice running back, but he's realistically just not ready yet. He's I'm I'm just worried about the and we've said that and I know we've said this in past Penn State games here where it's like I just I don't just trust this um quarterback here and they end up being able to run all over Ohio State getting key like third downs or long plays to extend these Penn State drives. And look at look at last year too. Um, Ohio State was running away with it last year, and then all of a sudden, 
back-to-back turnovers and resulted to back-to-back scores from Penn State, and they were right back in it again. Well, that just comes down to don't turn the ball over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And well, if you remember, if you remember too, it, it should have been a lot worse. Yeah. But um, uh, Fields fumbled it right at the goal line there. I think the next position um, interception, next position another fumble. So it was just a really bad. Uh, drives there in a row for Ohio State, and it just put Penn State right back into it. Sean Clifford, uh, Kyle talks about him being a runner, had 119 yards, averaging over well, right at seven yards a carry and a touchdown. So we'll see. Can can Ohio State has Ohio State done anything to improve their ability to defend against a quarterback running the ball? We're going to find out. Is basically we're gonna find out. Uh, I, I don't think Clifford is as athletic as either of the Nebraska quarterbacks, but that does not mean that he's he's bad. Uh, he's just maybe more of a physical runner than he is an athletic runner, which I think is probably a good thing for Ohio State. Uh, but their defense. Let's talk a little bit more about Penn State's defense. Uh, they're obviously missing Micah Parsons, who's an elite linebacker. Uh, We'll probably go in the first round of the NFL draft. Just, uh, again, another guy that Ohio State really wanted until they decided that they didn't for reasons. But those reasons not being talent. Um, He's an absolute monster, but he's not in this game, so let's not talk about him anymore. But it's a huge loss for Penn State. Uh, That being said, they have an incredible pair, and we talked a little bit about them earlier when we were talking about the... um, uh, in the deciphering day section of the show, talked a little bit uh, about Shaka Tony, Jason Owe. Again, Jason Owe, a lot like Noah Kane, a lot like Micah Parsons, a guy that Ohio State really wanted. That was that one year that Ohio State had trouble recruiting defensive ends in large part because of the rumor that uh, Larry Johnson Sr. was going to retire. Uh, in large part due to his son tweeting about it. His son, the uh, Penn State alumni, and uh, Jason Owe ends up at at Penn State. I'm not a conspiracy <laughs> conspiracy theory guy, but but uh, yeah, Jason Owe, a guy who Ohio State wanted, a guy who'd be starting at defensive end for Ohio State right now. Yes, he's that good, or you know. He at least he would have been that good had he been coached by had he been coached by Larry Johnson Sr., which he probably should have been. Anyway. But Shaka Tony, Jason Owe, both incredibly talented. We talked a little bit about how the pass protection for Ohio State was really good last week. But then I, I kind of put an asterisk on it and I said But Nebraska didn't doesn't have any special pass rushers. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? Ohio State's going to be playing against a pair of special pass rushers this weekend. Yes, no, absolutely. More so in Shaka Tony right now. He's just he's a little bit more experienced, uh, has a little bit more of a track record. Oway's a little bit newer to the field, but the measurables are there. The skill is there. Jason Oway is mm-hmm. a special, special player. Um, you won't see Justin Fields with as much... Uh, time to throw this week as we saw last week no if you if you're looking at last last year because i i had i took the time to watch last year's game here just try to and i know that it's not the same penn state as they were last year but you can not kind of get ohio feel. state either you can you can get a kind of a feel for it um before last year the past like two or three years it all came to one point for each of those games uh, prior to last year, but last year here, and I think we're going to really see Ohio State struggling to run the ball again, like we did against Nebraska. You look at last year, J.K. Dobbins, thirty-six carries for a buck fifty, and he averaged just over four yards a carry. Not great from what we've seen in J.K. in other games by his standard. By not- his his standard, and even Justin Fields, he had just over three yards a carry too. How so much they, they, they how much was that impacted by sacks? 
Uh, that's a good question. It says here. You always have to keep in mind that a quarterback's rushing stats in college football, unlike mm-hmm. the pros, is affected by sack numbers. It says three sacks. Does it say how many yards on those three sacks? I does not say. Okay, that's fine. Don't worry about but it. E- but either way, though, he had, it says here he had 21 carries for 68 yards. So even if you take five yards per sack, 15 yards... Sure. Still, it's still a hello, Apollo. Uh, nope. It's still that's 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 the girl. Oh, LG. <laughs> uh, it's still average as a team, sixty-one carries and under four yards a carry. All, all I'm saying is that it's they're going to be fighting for every yard against here. As you even said, their defensive line there with with Shaka and Owe it's going to be tough for them to establish a running game here and they have to be able to do that in this game also. Absolutely. Yeah. They're returning red shirt, uh, senior Antonio Shelton at defensive tackle junior. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, so I'm not going to try. Um, but yeah, it's this, this is Penn state. I know we just saw them lose to Indiana. I know our confidence is high. But they only lit up 200 yards. Yes. This is a very good defense. uh, And I have a lot of respect for them. Don't expect this to be a game that Ohio State has 30 points at halftime. Just get that. Don't don't expect this to be a game in which Ohio State doesn't punt in the first half. Just get that out of your head. When I say lower your expectations, I don't mean lower them to a bad place. I mean, lower them to a realistic place. This is Mm -hmm. a very good Penn State team. Yes, they just lost to Indiana. We went over statistically how they still were the better team than Indiana in many ways, but still ended up losing the game. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, I think we've seen Ohio State be on an end of that in the past as well where Ohio state in all they, they should have lost Ohio yep. state a couple of years ago should have lost that game, but then came back and won it, but they yes. got their doors kicked in early in the game. That was two years ago, right? Kyle that was two years ago. Yep. And you even look at the stats there. Penn state should have won. You look yeah. at the, yeah, you look at the stats there and yeah, Penn state should have won that game there. All right, Jerry. That being uh, said, where was that game? That was at Penn State. During a whiteout. What's not happening this week? A whiteout. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a huge thing that we're all mentioning but not really talking about. No whiteout. And that's just mm. huge for Ohio State. It it really is. James Franklin's underplaying it, Ryan Day's underplaying it. Everyone's like, oh, it's a, it's a thing, but it's not a big thing. And Justin Fields is downplaying it. Everyone's downplaying it. It's a big deal. Yep. It is one of the most intense environments in all of sports. Yes. All right, Jared, who do you have here? Do you have Ohio State covering or do you have Penn State to cover or upset Ohio, upset Ohio State? Not, not an upset. Ohio State wins this game and they cover. Okay. Everything I you... just said, I think Ohio State, their offense anyway, is clicking at an elite level. Justin Fields is unstoppable. These wide receivers are unstoppable. Mm. I believe Olave plays Ohio State 42, Penn State 17. All right. I have Ohio might State be, to... Might be more like 38. <laughs> if Ohio State crosses the 40 threshold, they'll win. I think if Ohio State crosses the 30 threshold, they win, because I really just don't like Penn State's offense that much. I don't either. Uh, I have Ohio State covering, too. I have them scoring 35 to, I'm trying to do some math in my my head, (laughs) to 17, 35 to 17. So you're just one less touchdown than me. Mm -hmm. Yep. I have 52 points for the total here. You have 59. 59. All right. Brawley says here, uh, Clifford looked absolutely horrible last week and Penn state lost in heartbreaking fashion. Too bad. They didn't have the refs from last year's fiesta ball to overturn that overtime <laughs> touchdown by Indiana. 
Whiteout is a non-factor, and the Bucks want that natty. Bucks to cover. He has 42-24, which is a cover and giving him 66 points for that game. That's all right. All right, Jared, we are at an hour here. So let's go through these Ask Sloopcast questions here. All right. Uh, the, we have uh, another another episode of Austin's Over and Under. He didn't, As, send, he didn't send us a... Um, oh, yeah. Uh, I actually did get something from uh, Stuart who sends us the name game. He said it just wasn't worth doing this week. Okay. All right. All right. Austin formation. All right. Here we go. Quickly over under. He says upheld targeting calls is one and a half. <laughs> Um, so upheld, uh, I'm going to go under. I'm going to go under as well. Amount of times JSN's catch by the commentators is two and a half. Amount of mentions. Uh, two and a half feels feels like a lot. It seems lot. like a lot. I'll, I'll go under. I'll go under as well. Amount of, amount of Ohio State pass catchers with three receptions or more. He has four and a half players. With three or more receptions. That's 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 way too many. Under. Yep, under. I would say four is probably the right number, so I'll go under. Really? I would put the over under at two and a half personally. Okay. Because like Olave absolutely will and Wilson absolutely will. But then there's like four or five people who might. <laughs> <laughs> but I but I but I think Wilson will end up with like six or seven and Olave will end up with six or seven. And then there's just not that many more left over. All right. Uh, let's see. Ohio state turnovers one and a half. Uh, I hope it's under. Yeah. It's gotta be under here. It, it, uh, I think it'll be under, I think one. Let's see the three running back sermon T chambers combined of 149 and a half points. So do they Yards. get 150 or not? You meant to say yards. Yards, yes. Yes. Uh, he says for note, they had 128 last week. I'm going to go under. I'm going to go under as well. This is yes. a significantly better defense than, especially defensive line, than they played last week. There's no yeah. reason to think that they're going to outpace what they did last week. Yeah. Tight end touchdowns, one and a half. Under. Uh, Austin, Austin, this should have been half. a half. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Watch what? Well, okay, now, now Ruckert's gonna have a great game just because we said that. But I'm gonna go under. All right, uh, Wilson and Olave come combined yardage 174 and a half yards. They had 233 last week, and a lot of this is going to come down to if Olave plays or not. If well, Olave I think that's plays, part of the equation. Yeah, if Olave plays over. Because yeah. he's his combined yardage, which includes returns. So I'm going to go. Over. No, no, no. He's saying <laughs> combined reception. He didn't say it, but he means combined reception yardage. I'll still go over. Yeah, only because if I believe. playing. See, but you're not allowed to say if Olave plays. That's part of the bet. Right. I'm still going to say over because I believe Olave plays. All right. Uh, Penn State, three and outs. He has that three and a half. I'm not, wait, I'm not sure in what direction he means this. Does he mean their defense three and out or their offense three and out? So let's I'm answer go both. With offense. I'm going to go let's, with offense. Let's answer both. Okay. Offense three and out. I'm going to go with over, over under three and a half. I'm going to go over for their offense. Right. Defensively under. I think it's a great number mm -hmm. under. Yes. I think it's right at three there. Yeah. Ohio State's going to have a three and out or two this game. I just mm -hmm. I want to set everyone's expectations. I think we kind of said "ha ha Nebraska" last week, more so than we should have. And I just this is gonna be a tough game for a while. I think Ohio State makes it look good in the fourth quarter. I think is why, you know, I, I my final score prediction was forty two to seventeen. It'll probably be 28 to 17 and we're sweating it a bit until like the fourth quarter where the depth chart takes over and Ohio State starts scoring points. Mm -hmm. Much like yep. what we saw against Nebraska. Yep. All right. Uh, let's see. We have next question here. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's do Cooper. Um, All right. 
Cincy or uh, if Cincy or BYU go undefeated and don't make the playoffs this year, what will it take to get a non-power five team in besides a playoff expansion? Yeah, it won't. It won't. Yeah, with especially if Oklahoma State falls apart, which I don't think Oklahoma State can sustain. Um, I don't see anyone from the Pac-12 getting involved. So, like, you have a Big Ten champion, an SEC champion, and then Clemson. Uh, <laughs> and then there's a fourth spot. Yep. And I mean, this, if if it if Cincinnati or BYU goes undefeated, none of them gets in. It will never happen in, until unless there's an expansion. Period. Yeah, and I believe if there's an expansion, then they'll write something in to auto place a group of five team mm-hmm. because they don't want to get sued again, like what happened with the BCS. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, next question here, Duncan asks. How long is too long for the podcast? And why is the answer three hours? <laughs> Duncan, we appreciate you. Um, we understand that you sloop cats, those of you who support us in Patreon and those of you who are active in our discord and are, we, you know, we're always talking to him and he's always talking to us. We appreciate that you would want as much content as possible to put out, which is why I think we're going to start doing a, a Patreon only show here before too long. Kyle, you and I need to talk about that off mic. Um, I think we're going to start doing a bonus show at some point uh, because we know that you guys want to hear, but we also need to keep the people who we're just one of the Ohio. There's a lot of people. We're just like one of the Ohio state podcasts they listen to. We know that we are your favorite and we appreciate you for that. But for a lot of people, we're one of like five or six Buckeye podcasts they listen to. And if we all of a sudden start doing two hour episodes, we're going to lose those people. Yep. So that's why I'm kind of thinking we start doing uh, maybe like a little bonus show for just for the Patreon folk. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, at Z spike 68 on Twitter. Are you expecting Penn state to go heavy with a dose of zone coverage since man coverage versus our wide receivers and leaving fields to run free is a recipe for failure. And if so, does that mean the tight ends get more involved down the seams? Hmm. Yeah, Penn State definitely likes to do more zone against Ohio State here, mainly because of wanting to make sure that they cover fields. And they did a really good job last year doing that. So I I do anticipate a heavy dose of zone coverage. As do I. And I think a lot of that has to do with, we didn't talk a lot about in in Know Your Enemy. We didn't talk nearly enough about uh, the corners for for Penn State and they have good they have good defensive backs I'm not going to say they don't um Lamont Wade's a really good safety uh they have uh Joey Porter's son uh starting at cornerback for them this year he showed really good stuff in week one against Indiana now we talked a lot about Penn State's defensive line during Know Your Enemy probably not enough about their defensive backs they have good defensive backs don't get me wrong um, but they can't hang with Ohio State's wide receivers. Yeah, Ohio not State yet. Wide receivers Joey are Porter, in. Joey Porter Jr. I, I think he's a red shirt freshman, young guy, and he'll get there. He's not there yet, and mm-hmm. they're gonna have to go zone because I just think going man to man is not just a disaster from letting Fields run around standpoint, but also because their guys are gonna get torched standpoint especially if you start bringing in third and three and four wide receiver sets and you start really watering down their secondary. And all of a sudden you have Fleming and JSN and Mookie Cooper and uh, G Scott, all of a sudden, you know what I mean? The, the depth is Jamison Williams too insane at Ohio state wide receiver to all of a sudden say, you know what? We're just going to start going one-on-ones. Mm-hmm. That's a recipe for disaster. Yep. All right. Last uh, couple more questions here. We got to really move. Yeah. Quickly. Sorry. Sorry. Um, how many games does Shiano have to win in the big 10 coat to win the big coach of the year? Uh, he's done. He's done it, right? <laughs> Three. <laughs> I think he's, I think he's already got it. Sean okay. is coach of the year. Yes. Uh, Dinger. Because I think they're going to beat Maryland, right? So I'm just giving them that one. I think two. Two. 
Got Michigan maybe three, State. Maybe, maybe maybe three in their um the the five, week nine there. He wins it with two. He seals it with three. Yes. All right. Dinger says, "What's your over under on how many boneheaded clock management mistakes Franklin makes? Over under is two and a half. I was yes, two and a half. I'm going over three and a half. I'll go under. So because okay. I think the number is three. Okay." All right. Uh, last question. Stuart underscore E for US vet. Another sloop cat. Based on the first game to second, based on the first game to second game jump that often happens, which position group do you feel will be most improved versus Penn State? I like the offensive line. This is yes. a good offensive line. They, yes, they underperformed in week one. That being said, this is a really good offensive line. And mm-hmm let's say they have the exact same quality game from production standpoint that they had last week. That's an improvement because this is a much better defensive line. So if they go out into this game and if they look the same, then that's an improvement. And that's kind of what I'm expecting. Yep. All right. Who has the first takeaway in this game, the secondary or the front seven? I'm going to go with the secondary based on what I've seen against Indiana. Crap. Clifford could also get strip sacked. Yeah. But, but I no, think you're, he's more you're right. li- I think he's more likely to, to throw a pick first though. Yeah. You're probably right. All right. Uh, that doesn't mean that they, the secondary couldn't get the stripped. Fumble that that doesn't too. mean the linebacker can't get the interception, Kyle. Well, that's true too. All right. With Franklin <laughs> being in the hot seat in 2016. Before no, he's beat. not. Oh, in 2016. Sorry. 16. <laughs> What would it take to finally send him packing? He's that that's his job. It is. Yes. Uh, are, are there people within the state of Pennsylvania who'd like to see him gone? Yes. Are some of those people racially motivated? Yes, they are. That being said, I really just don't think that Penn state can do better. Sorry. They're, they're, mm-hmm. they're in, they're better. They're, they're in many ways. They're Michigan. Uh, and in many ways, they're Michigan. They're better than Michigan because Franklin's better than Harbaugh. But if you all of a sudden fire who is essentially your Lloyd Carr, that's what Kyle, what do you think? Franklin equals Lloyd Carr. Yeah. You can fire him if you want to, but what's waiting for you on the other side of that. At least Lloyd Carr won big games. I mean, Lloyd Carr towards the end of his career, not Lloyd. Oh, he yeah. wanted he Lloyd Carr won a share of a national title. I'm not disrespecting Lloyd Carr by any means. By the way, Michigan fans, there's none of you are listening, but come here, Michigan fans. I need to talk to you guys real quick. What is what is your deal with Bo Schembechler? He is maybe your third best coach. Maybe. Yo, I would take Yost, and I would take Lloyd Carr before I took Schembechler. What is your deal with Shem Beckler? I think it's just because he coached against Woody Hayes. Once again, you're defining yourselves based on us. Whenever you celebrate Bo Shem Beckler, all you're really doing is honoring is honoring Woody Hayes. It's all mm-hmm. you're doing. Yep. That's all you're doing. What's your deal with Bo Shem Beckler? He didn't do anything. All right. That's enough. All right, that's that is all the <laughs> questions here, Jared. All right, that's that's the, you know what? Let's end it on that little bit of Bo Schembechler hate. It's not even hate. It's just rational. I don't get your Bo Schembechler love. Sorry. Anyway. Uh, yeah, that's the end of today's show. I'd like to really encourage everyone to check out our Patreon. Um, by the way, a lot of our posts at uh, patreon.thesloopcast.com. Uh, a lot of our posts there are are public, by the way. Um, there are things that are behind the paywall that you won't see, but you can also go see a lot of our stuff that's, uh, in front of the paywall. Um, so you can go absolutely go check out our Patreon page. Uh, you can see our game posters there. Uh, you can get links to our YouTube videos there. So there, there's stuff there for you to see outside of the, the stuff that's behind the paywall, which you get primarily behind the paywall or the early access to the podcast episodes and you know, maybe a couple other things here or there soon, the bonus episodes, which again is, is a thing we will start doing at some point. I just don't know when that some point is. 
Um, but I think I, mean, I had a conversation with everyone in the discord this week, just saying like, how do you guys feel about being patrons? And they, and I got a lot of positive feedback and I appreciate all of that. And the response back I got from a lot of them, especially those of the people who are in the $3 tier, which if you guys want to give us more money, that's, that's great. But realistically, you're going to be perfectly happy at that $3 tier because that gets you in the discord. And according to everyone there, the discord and the community we have in the discord, um, is something that they all really enjoy. And I think it's a thing that a lot of people would enjoy if they wanted to be a part of it. And like I said, it's $3 a month to get early access to episodes. And like I said, at some point we're going to start doing a bonus episode and the discord is not just like a fan page where people who like the podcast, like Kyle and I are active in there. So if you ever just wanted to ask us questions or talk to us or whatever else, we're active members in that discord. It's not just a thing that we set up and walked away. So we could have some weird Patreon benefit. We show you early access to the game posters. We talk to the people in the, in our discord about what they want to see out of the show. They help direct the direction of the show. Um, so it's, I, I think the discord is a thing. And by, if you don't know, a discord is just like a private chat server. That's all it is. It's a private chat server. So what's a discord? I don't know. It's, it's just a private place. You can go and chat with people. That's all it is. So I just want to push that. I think a lot of people, would find that that $3 a month, which again, also gets you early access to episodes. And if we start doing bonus episodes, we'll also get you access to bonus episodes is, is well worth your money. And just, it's, I think it's a thing that's worth checking out. And if you don't like it, you can just cancel it. That's it. Like you're not signed up for six months or a year. You just, just, just cancel it. That's it. If, if you, something, so give it a try and it's the price of a candy bar. That's all. I'm, I'm just asking you nicely. Come, come give it a try. I think you'll really like it. Um, other than that, we have merchandise. This is the circle logo t-shirt and Kyle's wearing our classic. We've got barbecue t-shirt. Um, some merchandise. We also have the 7071 store. Uh, you can go to the sloopcast.com, which just is just a landing page that will show you the links to all of our other stuff. So if you want to check out the Patreon, if you want to check out the merch stores, whether it be the Sloopcast one or the 7071 store, you can find all of that at the Uh, and that also will take you to our YouTube page. It'll link you to our sponsors. It'll link you to a bunch of stuff. Check that out. All right, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're 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 way way over. Just gonna say good luck to my hometown, Columbus Grove, taking on Archbold this Saturday night. There you go, everyone. Everyone support those Columbus Grove Bulldog. If you're if your Ohio if your Ohio high school team is no longer in the playoff, go ahead and support those uh, Columbus Grove Bulldogs just for Kyle. Yes, they run they run a similar offense as to your Buckeyes ah. this year. Division Surprisingly, s- as as being as being that small division small. six, right? Division six, yeah. Yeah, so everyone go, everyone go check out. Yeah, just go, just go check out some high school team. Everyone, everyone do that. All right, tonight's ending music will be from an Ohio based, a Columbus based, as a matter of fact. Uh, I'll say a math rock band. Uh, they're called Of Two Minds, and you can check out. Uh, I'll link their Bandcamp page in the show notes, and I'll link a. I'll link to the song, whatever song of theirs I end up choosing. I'll also link that down in the show notes. And with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer and coffee, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Of Two Minds. What's up, YouTube? Yo, yo sincerely you guys like kind of want to i know i talk a lot about the patreon stuff we're really trying to upgrade our stuff we want to do more video stuff we want to so we're really we're really trying to get some people into the patreon like i said it's three dollars a month it's a candy bar um and like i said if you get into the discord or whatever else and it's just not for you cancel just cancel there's no you're out three bucks 
give it a try. That's all I ask. Um, I know one of the things that some of the existing people in the Discord had mentioned, like, hey, why don't you open it up for a weekend? Just let whoever in so they can come and they can see it. But I think my fear with doing something like that is if a, if a big influx of people come in, then all of a sudden it's not our community anymore. And it's not this. It's not this thing that our existing people are creating in the Discord. It's something <laughs> different because you have this huge influx of people who are only in there for a weekend. Not that I think the influx would be all that huge, but yep. um, just it's something to check out. It's something to consider. Um, even if none of that interests you and you maybe just want to help us out and, and like I said, throw us three bucks a month, then Patreon, you can either just Google Patreon and Sloopcast or go to patreon.sloopcast. Nope. Patreon.thesloopcast.com. And like I said, there's always the merch stores as well. If you want a tangible thing in return. All right, let's, uh, Let's rejoin our audio only listeners. Kyle, do you want to go first again? Or do you want me to go first? I'll go. Okay. Whenever you're ready. All right. Thank you. And the, this episode is brought to you by the mad Canadian barbecue company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, as we've mentioned numerous of times, they have 14 great seasonings to offer, such as one of my favorites, the Sonoran Heat, the Savory, Discord, and the Old Fashioned. You can check out all those great seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. The promo code one spelled out O N E year two zero at checkout for 20% off. For the rest of this month or sleuthcast 10 at after october um, if you have any questions at all feel free to hit up the mad canadian on any of his social medias on facebook on twitter you answer any questions that you may have or in our discord or our discord too <laughs> and he'll, he'll let you know where he's at this weekend with the mad canadian food truck um, yeah the mad, mad canadian barbecue company has your butt covered this episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by ironbeancoffee.com and Apollo. Hi, everybody. Hi, Apollo. <laughs> YouTube listeners, this is Apollo. He doesn't understand personal space. Uh, who is the Iron Bean Coffee Company? Um, they're a world-class hand-roasted micro-batch coffee brewer. Uh, they fresh roast your order. They do it right out of Perrysburg, Ohio, which, if you don't know, is just outside of Toledo. Um, like I said, they are a small batch roaster. They roast to order. Uh, they don't roast your beans until you order them. I think like you hear a term roast to order. Like they legitimately don't even roast the beans until you buy them. That's how fresh you're getting it. You can, for many of them, you can get it whole bean or freshly ground. Again, you know, it's ground freshly too, cause it wasn't even roasted before you ordered it. Um, like they are veteran owned. Uh, so you're supporting veterans with every bag of coffee and does all of that end up costing you a bit more? The roast to order, the hand roasted, the fact that it's organic, the fact that it's single sourced, the fact that it's benefiting veterans, the fact that it's uh, USDA organic and fair trade and all that stuff. Yeah, it does, but you get free shipping over 50% or excuse me, free shipping over $50. If you're near Toledo, you can order it on the site and pick it up in person. Um, and like I said, it's just really good. Like when it comes down to it, it's just really, really good. Uh, you have the integrity roast, which is their flagship dark roast. Uh, they have the Rocco, uh, and they say in the Rocco that there's something special and unique about an Ethiopian natural when it's at its best. For those who enjoy coffees that insist on being noticed, that's the Rocco. And you can get that one in either a medium or a dark roast. They have an amazing selection. They have the unicorn and you don't even know what the unicorn is going to be. Like it's, it's something out of their R and D. Uh, I just actually ordered a unicorn bag myself. 
We'll see what it is. It could be flavored. It could be not flavored. It could be a medium roast. It could be a dark. Who knows? It's an adventure. We'll find out. Uh, all sorts of cool stuff over at ironbeancoffee.com. Uh, once again, that is ironbeancoffee.com, America's local coffee roaster. YouTube, checking in with you one more time. We're throwing some stuff, uh, I think, over here on my face. We'll have the playlist for uh, this season. We'll have a season six playlist here. And over on Kyle's face, I think I'm going to put the <laughs> the subscribe button. So depending upon if you're listening to this on the Sloopcast uh, YouTube channel, then you can subscribe to Sloopcast over there on Kyle's face. Or if you're listening to this on the Buckeye Scoop YouTube channel, then you can subscribe to the Buckeye Scoop over there on Kyle's face. We don't care which one you subscribe to or where you listen. Actually, we they actually have ads. So we actually make money if you listen over there. Not that it's much, but we do. But wherever you want to listen, we don't care. Uh, so yeah, uh, season six here. And over there on Kyle's face, you can subscribe to the channel. So be sure to do that. Peace out, YouTube.